thinking of planning a destination wedding, here are five things you should do before you even get started. Hold on, let's talk about that. Hey, I'm Jack with Vacation Ease, and as you know, I do post new videos every Tuesday. Do me a favor and hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, and you will get notified. So you're thinking of planning a destination wedding, but not sure? Okay, so here are some tips I have for you before you even decide, yeah, I want to do it, some things you should think about. Number one, think about your dates. Now, here's why I say that. Think about the weather. Okay, so let's just say you're thinking of having a destination wedding in Mexico, and you want to be on the beach, and you're thinking about August. It's hot. So you need to think about what is the weather when you're going to have your destination wedding. We recently had a client say to us, hey, I want to get married in Greece on Christmas. And I'm like, great, where do you want to get married? Well, Mykonos or Santorini. I'm like, there's nothing doing there. Most of the hotels are closed. It's cold. You're not going to go on a beach. So when you're thinking about planning a destination wedding, first thing you want to do is think about the date you want and think about the weather where you want. And if it still makes sense, okay, let's move to number two. Now, since we're thinking about dates, let's think about dates and price. You think about Jack, what does this mean? Okay, so when you have your destination wedding, there's two budgets you have to worry about. One is what it's gonna cost you for your destination wedding. And the second is, what is it going to cost my guests to come to my destination wedding? Now, why dates make an important thing about this is because there is seasonality related to the destination you want to go to and the price for your guests. So as an example, let's say you're thinking, hey, I want to do a family-friendly resort in the Caribbean, and because the kids are off school over Thanksgiving, let's do Thanksgiving. Great idea. The weather's good, which we just talked about in most of the Caribbean, but the prices are gonna be sky high. So what I will tell you is when you look at the destination you want, you need to look at the price. If you're thinking about Paris or Europe, the summertime, the prices are high, the room rates are high, the transportation, the flights to get there, everything's gonna be crowded. So if you're looking at the prices, let's simplistically look at Mexico and the Caribbean. I always tell people there is an inverse relationship to price and temperature. What that means is the colder it is where I am in Philadelphia, or you may be in Chicago or New York, so the colder it is where people live, the higher the prices are going to be. So if you're thinking of having a wedding in the Caribbean or Mexico in February, just know the room rates for your guests are going to be higher than if you thought about maybe doing it in September or May. So um, the other thing is in terms of the price, anytime you look at what I would say is a Hallmark holiday, a religious holiday, or a school holiday, just know the room rates are going to go up then as well. Now for you as the host, the budget you have could also be higher in those high periods. What we're seeing now is the resorts are changing prices for wedding packages based upon seasonality. So you may find a wedding in February may cost you more than a wedding in July. So again, when you're thinking about the dates, we've already talked about, you wanna look at what the weather is, but you also need to think about the price. Because what you might find is, the time with the best weather may also have the highest price. And what we find is, as long as your guests are happy with your dates, you're gonna have a higher likelihood of them coming, but I do not advise going over a high price period because your guests may look at the price of your trip and say, forget about it. This is just too expensive because they're going over Christmas or New Year's or something like that. Now, one of the other things you really need to think about if you're going to have a destination wedding and making that decision is your guests. Who are these people you're going to invite and will they come? Like, it's great that you're going to plan this thing, but if no one's coming, you're just going to be upset. 
So I always tell potential clients to put your rooming list, or we call a rooming list, your guest list together, put everybody down and look at those people that you're going to invite. Now you're going to have family, they have to attend pretty much, but then you're going to have friends, right? Work colleagues, college, whatever, just some friends. Will these people travel? So things you want to think about. Do most of these people have passports? I know that doesn't make sense, but if you're going out of the country, everybody needs a passport. And if you think they don't have them, one, can they get them? Because there are certain people that can't. And number two, are you giving them enough time to get them? So while I'm filming this, I would say that currently people in the U.S. can get new passports and renewal passports without expedited service within about two to four months is what we're hearing. Now, the other thing is let's go passports aren't an issue. But do these people like to travel? I mean, there are some people like me, as you see on our Facebook page, we're always traveling. We're in the travel business. It's a passion. But there are other people like, hey, you know, I just want to sit in my backyard, I don't want to go, I don't like beaches, I don't like Europe, I don't like Hawaii, I don't, I don't, I don't, whatever it may be. So again, I don't like having clients that are upset because they invite 100 people and only 20 people show. And what we hear as the partner in planning the wedding is the reality from some of these guests saying, you know, A, I don't have the money, B, I don't like flying, I'm scared to go to fill in the blank, Mexico, Punta Cana, Jamaica, Rome, Greece, wherever. So you really need to look at who are you inviting and do I really think they're going to come? And if some of them aren't going to come, do the ones I want to come, going to come? Simplistically, what we say is about 50% of people you invite to your destination wedding will actually show up. Now hit number three is, since we've found a date, we think these people are gonna come, this is big. Give them enough time to plan. Um, I had someone contact me today that wanted to have a destination wedding in three months from now. Could we do it? Yes. Should you do it? I don't advise it because we've gotta give your guests, I typically tell people, start planning your destination wedding a year to 18 months in advance. And we want to give your guests a year to 12 to 13 to 14 months in advance. Why? Maybe they have to take time off of work. Maybe they've got to save money. You know, it's going to cost them a thousand to three thousand dollars. So the more time you give your guests, but you don't want to give them too much time, like not two or three years. But if you give your guests about a year, we see a higher likelihood of people being able to come. Now, we keep this simple because we as vacationees and most of our friends that are in the business, we'll design a website for you. We'll set up payment plans for your guests to keep it simple. So again, we've got the dates based upon weather. We've got the date based upon the price. We know that the guests are going to travel. So again, we want to give them enough time to plan your, to come to your wedding so that everybody, including you is happy with who's coming. Okay. Now, this is like my big tip. It should have been number one. Hire a travel planner like us. Hire a wedding planner, whatever you want to do. So let's take a step back and um, I'll link to some videos I did a couple weeks ago about one, why you should hire a travel planner and two, why you might want to hire vacationees. You definitely want to hire a travel planner as the first thing you do or talk to someone. Why? Because all the stuff we just talked about, these hacks I'm talking about, these hints, it's stuff we're going to talk to you about up front. And it may be that you decide not to work with us or you may not have a wedding, but at least if you work with a professional up front that has experience in doing destination weddings, you'll have all these things exposed versus getting into it and realizing, oh my gosh, I forgot to do something. Now, I really suggest the travel planner, if you're going to have a wedding someplace strange, exotic, you know, we just did something in the Maldives and Tahiti we've done and in Europe and you may also want a wedding planner. Why do I say that? Most of the places we work with, we have connections from the wedding planning, the decor, the catering, things like that. But if you're looking at what I call a really unique place, we or your travel partner may not have those connections. The resort you're working with may not have them or have limited connections. So it may behoove you to look at a wedding planner 
in those destinations. Now, if you're thinking Mexico, Caribbean, don't worry about a wedding planner. Most of the resorts that reputable travel planners like us at Vacation News work with will have internal planning departments and most of those teams, if you stick with the resorts your travel planner, travel professional recommends to you, they're all going to have teams that will be able to accomplish and create the wedding that you dream about versus trying to sell you some crazy wedding package that is just going to give you headaches. And one last item um, you may think, again, this should be first, is look at the marriage requirements where you want to get married. Now, why I've put this last is because the majority of people will do a symbolic wedding, not a legal wedding. Symbolic wedding means you've gotten married at home legally and you're having a ceremony, which most people will think is a legal ceremony in front of them. Your guests will see that. But with that, there's minimal paperwork that needs to be done. But if you are thinking of a legal wedding, again, it's very important. If you're thinking of a legal wedding, you want to look at this location, the destination you're looking at. Can you legally get married? Do you have to come earlier? Is there certain paperwork that you may need? If it's a Catholic wedding, um, do they have a priest or a Muslim wedding? Do they have an imam? So, that again is very important, but going back to the thing I just mentioned and should have mentioned number one, your travel planner will talk to you about that. If we know that you want a legal wedding, we're going to identify the locations that we think are easier to get married legally. But again, if you have a place that you want to get married, we've done legal weddings in Europe, um, in Asia. We can do it, but it's something you need to tell us up front. You can't tell us two months before your wedding, oh, by the way, I've decided I want a legal wedding. There's a lot of work that has to go into that in many places, and in some places not. So these are six different travel hints or hacks to think about if you want to have a destination wedding before you even get into the start of planning to decide is a destination wedding right for me or not. And this really is a good thing to look at before you spend a lot of time and money and hire someone to help you plan a wedding and find out that some of this stuff isn't going to work for you. Again, I'm Jack with Vacationies. Thanks for watching my videos. Hopefully this information has been helpful for you.